So it says here, Erdogan's calculations as the Israel-Gaza conflict escalates. So this came out recently. It's written by some CIA front group. They call themselves the Arab Center of Washington, D.C. Oh, yeah, CIA is not involved in this. No, absolutely not. Impossible. It's completely unbiased. But anyway, it does make an interesting point. On October 20th, during Friday prayers at the historic Hagia Sophia Mosque. That's the Hagia Sophia Mosque was once a church, okay? It was conquered by the Turks. The Turks took it over and made it into a mosque. So the Hagia Sophia Mosque in Istanbul, Mr. Uh, there was a imam there, Ali Erbas. Erbas is the head of Turkey's state-run religious affairs directorate. So this Airbus guy, he stood before an emotional crowd of worshippers with a sword in his hand and declared that the world, bereft of mercy and a conscience, has been idly watching this genocide in Gaza while thousands of innocent people are dying. Now, what did I tell you guys about Turkey? I told you guys, Turkey, I think, is going to invade Israel. I think that Turkey is going to invade Israel. And I think there's going to be another Holocaust. The common, the common saying, and I've talked about this so many times, guys. I've been talking about this since 2018. The common saying in regards to the Holocaust is never again. That's what they say all the time, right? They say never again. Let me make this thing a little bit smaller. They say never again. That's what they say all the time. Well, it's going to happen again. It's going to happen again. I'm sorry, but it's going to happen again. I wish it I wish this, I wish this was not the case, but it is. Um so here we go. I think what eventually is going to happen is that and I could be totally wrong about this, but I think that what's going to happen is the the war between the Palestinians and the Israelis is going to get so bad that Turkey will say we need to intervene to save the Palestinians. And it's going to be under the pretext of the Isla of the Palestinian cause that Turkey will invade Israel. That's what I believe. Zakhar Michiov says Turkey won't do shot. Uh, you're wrong. You're, you're just wrong. I, I just... I, you're wrong. That's like people saying, oh, uh, Russia is not going to invade Ukraine. People who thought that way were wrong. Everybody underestimates their enemy. That's the problem. Everybody underestimates the other side. That's the problem. So it says here, his statement echoed a warning by Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan to Israel, quote, to never expand the scope of its attacks against civilians and to immediately cease its operations that amount to a genocide. Let's talk about the Armenian genocide, Mr. Turkey. Let's talk about the Armenian Genocide. Turkey is in no position to give anybody a lecture on genocide. I'm so sick of this. I'm so sick of this crap. Turkey's like, hey, yelled at him, yelled at him, yeah, genocide. Yeah, they committed a genocide of the Armenians and they deny it. So, F you. I'm so sick of this, this, this country. This insane country called Turkey. It's a mentally ill country. It's a mentally ill country. They commit massacres and they deny it. And they act like, it, like they act as if it never happened and you're the bad guy. A bunch of lunatics. Them and Azerbaijan. Two mentally ill countries. So anyway. His statement echoed a warning by Turkish... Okay, I already read this. That warning took a new twist when the Turkish president... Now check this out. This is insane, guys. That warning took a new twist when the Turkish president later declared that Hamas is a liberation movement dedicated to the liberation of Palestine, calling the group Mujahideen, waging a battle to project to protect its lands and people. Well, they are protecting their people because Israel killed the people, but they're killing civilians. Yeah, after they committed a massacre in Israel. Okay. Turkey's air here's from Reuters. Turkey's Erdogan says Hamas is not a terrorist organization. Oh wow. Are they they paid walled me. But we'll just read what it says in the beginning here. Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan is in his in his strongest comments yet on the Gaza conflict said on Wednesday the Palestinian militant group Hamas was not a terrorist organization, but a liberation group fighting to protect Palestinian lands. NATO member Turkey condemned the civilian deaths. Etc., etc. So he calls them Mujahideen. 
So if he supports the people who committed the worst massacre on the Jews since the Holocaust, what does that tell us about Turkey? What does that tell us? Well, from my experience, people who people who downplay massacres want to commit a massacre. People who deny genocide want to commit a genocide. That's Turkey. Turkey wants to commit a, a genocide of the Jews. They, they hate Israel. And it's not just... Here's the thing. It's not just the... Oh, it's the Islamists. What about the secular Turkish... They're all... Listen. Turkish... Secular Turkish citizens and religious Turkish citizens, they both have something in common. They both deny the Armenian Genocide. They're both very nationalistic, and they both are very, very pro-Palestine. And so that unites them together. You see what I'm saying? And there is another party. There's a rising party in Turkey. And I wrote about this yesterday. There's a rising party in Turkey. It's called the Welfare Party. They have five seats in the Turkish parliament. Five seats is not a small thing, by the way. It, they, they needed a million votes to get those five seats. But check this one out, guys. Here we go. Let's look at this one. Okay. So it says here, and I wrote this yesterday, but I'm just going to read an excerpt of it. Major Turkish politician, Muhammad Ali Fatih Erbekan. Okay, this dude, this guy, okay, this dude, he looks like a villain, okay? He looks like a serial killer, okay? That's what you're dealing with, everybody. Turkish politician Muhammad Ali Fatih Erbakan called for a worldwide Islamic uprising against Israel. He also has called for the throwing out of the U.S. ambassador from Turkey, the prosecution of Turkish-Israeli citizens who have joined the IDF, and for the enabling of Iran to attack Israel. Now, what did I say? He's, now, there's a... There is an air base in Turkey that's used by NATO. Now, according to this guy, the air base is used to, to shield Israel from any attacks from Iran, from any possible attacks from Iran. It is called the Kurechik Air Base. Is that what? Hold on. Is it is it the air base? Yeah. No, it's a radar station. Sorry. Kurechik radar station. And this is what this guy had to say. He said, he said, there is a radar base established in Kurechek, Malatya, to protect Israel against Iranian missiles. Is it up to us to protect this murderous Zionist Israeli regime? For God's sake, let's close down this Kurechek radar base. Now, there, there's several things that I want to say about this. This is very interesting. This is, this is a, So, for one, what does this show us here? For one, it shows us that... It shows us that the Turks and the Iranians can unite in the future in their hatred for Israel. You know, I'm not going to lie, man. This Miller stuff, I can see why so many people buy it. Maybe it's a big-ass can and it calms you down. Anyway. there, I think that eventually the Turks and the Iranians will unite. They will unite because they are united in their hatred for Israel. And it also tells us, and I mentioned this in the article that I wrote, it also tells us that the world is, is fragmenting. The world is fragmenting. And people who study these things know this. See, we have become so accustomed to the world that came out after the Second World War, which was America being this great empire, right? This huge hegemony that runs the world. After, after World War II, the Soviet Union and, and America ran the world. It was, a, it was a dual pole world, not a unipolar world. And the Soviet Union and America ran the world. The Soviet Union crashed it was done away with the soviet union was gotten rid of and what that ended up leading to was a unipolar world where it's not america and russia it's just america and what america did was it strengthened its old enemies america strengthened its old enemies oh yes absolutely america said okay 
Germany. Half of Germany is controlled by the Soviets. With the fall of the Soviet Union, we can unite both East and West Germany. And with the reunification of Germany, we will revive Germany in a way. Revive the old Germany. Not in the sense of reviving Nazism, but in the sense of reviving the whole country of Germany. In the sense of bringing it back together. The reunification, in other words. When America decided to do this, Margaret Thatcher said, Oh my God, they're back. The Germans are back. And she said something like, we fought them in a, in a war, and now they're, now they're going to come back, blah, 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 blah. She was against this reunification. And the Russians warned the Americans about this. The Russians told the Americans that if they reunified Germany, it will destabilize Europe. And the Americans laughed at the Russians. Why? Because... Because America, Americans are very good at underestimating everybody. They underestimate the Muslims, they underestimate Turkey, they underestimate Russia. Well, maybe not Russia, but they underestimate the people that they help. Oh, what's this? I mean, is there like a demon in the house or is this electricity? I don't know. America helped its old enemies. It helped Japan, it helped Germany, it helped, these, it helped the old enemies of America. And now what's happening is, well, America got too... America became full of hubris and pomp and arrogance. Why do I say this? Because America marveled at itself as it saw its ability to invade other countries with the thought that it could do so effortlessly without serious repercussions. It invaded Iraq without justification. It killed a million Iraqis. It destroyed the country. Now you could say, well, Iraq is doing better now, blah, blah, blah. Iraq will never recover, in my opinion, because Iraq will always now be a country open to uh, control from outside forces. If it's not America, it's Turkey. What the Iraq war did, and I've said this a million times, what the Iraq war did was it weakened the morale of the American people. It was a war that went on for what? Almost two decades? No. More? Well, yeah, almost two decades the war went on. Thousands of American soldiers died. It was horrendous. And the American people want nothing to do with war. Nothing. Even if you told the American people, we got to go fight for Israel's existence, the Americans will f give you the middle finger. They want nothing to do with war. Americans have become greatly, deeply isolationist. And I cannot blame them because who the hell wants to go to war? Right? Life is so short to go to war. Why do you want to go to war for? It's nonsense. Th they don't want to go to war. So the American nation, America as a nation right now, I think is slowly reclusing itself this is what i believe it's slowly reclusing itself and what eventually is going to happen and this is you're already seeing this in a way is america is gonna say okay you guys take it over you guys deal with this problem germany you are our ally you deal with europe because america right now america has the technological ability to destroy the world if it wanted to right it could drop nukes it could really mess the whole world up but that wouldn't benefit the United States. America can't police the world. It's, it, it, it can't. It's like the Roman Empire. You know, the Roman Empire spanned all the way to Britain. Went all the way to Britain. Julius Caesar went all the way to Britain. And what did that do? It stretched the Romans thin. The Romans stretched themselves too thinly in their hubris and their arrogance as an empire. And it, it was exhausting for the Roman Empire to continually send soldiers to Great Britain to make sure that they held control over that country because that those British people, those people that were living there, they wanted to rebel all the time. There was a woman who rebelled against the Romans. What was her name? Budica, Budica, whatever her name was. Budica. I wish women had names like that nowadays. They don't have names like that anymore. 
but she did a rebellion against the Romans. So it was exhausting. It was too exhausting for the Romans to control Britain. And eventually the Romans gave up Britain. And when the Romans gave up Britain, what happened? When the Romans gave up Britain, the Germanians invaded Britain. That's what happened. Uh, they say that uh, the Roman um, communities living in, in what is now England, they were attacked by these like outside savages. I think these outsiders were... Uh, they were maybe some kind of a Celtic people. But when the Romans left, eventually the Anglo-Saxons came. And the Anglo-Saxons were a Germanic, barbaric people who came from... Um, you know, it was the... You had these Germanic peoples who came from Germany, Denmark, Netherlands. They came from those areas the Anglo-Saxons, and those people came in and they invaded all of what is now England. And that is why England is called England. England. Anglo-Saxon. The land of the Anglos. So those people were, were conquered by the Anglo-Saxons. So America has exhausted itself, and what's going to happen when America pulls away from its position as a world hegemony? The barbarians are going to come back. That's what's going to happen. The barbarians are going to come back. Barbarians are going to come back. The Germans are going to rise up. Turkey will rise up. And we got a little taste of this already. We got a little taste of this. When Trump said, let someone else deal with Syria. Well, what did he mean by that? He meant Turkey. And under Trump's administration, Turkey went into northern Syria. That's Turkey expanding itself. And in 2020... Turkey defeated the Armenians through its proxy, Azerbaijan. So, there's so many different things happening here. Not so many, but there's a, f a number of things happening here. And Turkey, looking at Israel, Turkey is waiting for an opportunity. Right now is not the opportunity. Because this is Israel's war against terrorism. Turkey doesn't have the necessarily the high ground right now because turkey is in itself in a war with terrorists Tur kurdish terrorists and the turks have been bombing the, those terrorists and civilians have also suffered so turkey is in no position to lecture anybody on this thing but turkey is waiting for the opportunity and i think that opportunity will come when things get really bad and i mean really bad i think eventually jews will kill arabs and it's going to be ugly it's going to be ugly. And uh, I think Turkey eventually will invade Israel. That will be a rise of Turkish power, right? As Turkey expands, that's a that's a rise in, in Turkish power. It's an expansion of Turkish power. And Russia will be the biggest enemy of, of the risen, of the revived Turkey, of the revived Turkish power. And I think that uh, Russia and Turkey right now, they are vying over the Middle East. So Turkey looking for that opportunity. That is Turkey looking for the opportunity to expand itself in the Middle East. And as Turkey expands, Russia has a growing enemy to deal with for the future. Have you ever seen the series The Last Kingdom? No, I have not. Have you ever heard of the Yanuka? He wants Israel to rebuild the temple. I see fulfillment in Isaiah about Israel and its building being destroyed by fire by the Assyrians. Right. Right, exactly. They are already up, but just undercover. Who, who's, that, who's already up? Remy, a lot of people claim to know prophecy. Crazies too. What do the fathers say about the prophecies? Okay. We are war-weary and economy is broke, so we really can't wage war until we rebuild after decades of isolation. Well, a lot can happen in decades. Uh, you know, all, uh, all, 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 all that it would take is a decade of American isolation and the whole world's going to be killing each other. That's some Freddy Krueger stuff. I mean, it's just happening. I don't know. It's probably the, 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 the storm outside. I'm not sure. It's not really raining, but it was raining a little bit earlier today, so... I disagree. Noah disagrees. I think so long as the Palestinian issue is not resolved, then Israel and Saudi Arabia can never normalize. 
And perhaps that was the intention. Perhaps the intention of this Hamas attack was to prevent Israel from normalizing with Saudi Arabia. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe, you know, the Iranians, they're... Hamas is a proxy of Iran, and perhaps Iran doesn't want Israel and Saudi Arabia to join forces, so they did they did this attack to prevent that from happening. Because they know anytime Israel does goes through something horrendous like this, they, they will always respond with bombing uh, the region. The world, like I said, the world is is fragmenting. The world as we know it is fragmenting, and this Turkish politician who has a million votes says to hell with NATO. To hell with NATO. And I think Turkey, if you look at the, the Turkish, um, if you look at the Turkish, uh, what's it called? Military, uh, uh, military industry complex, what's it called? Industrial military complex. If you look at the industrial military complex of Turkey, they have been working very much so on making their own military technology. And they want to make their own jet fighter. So what does this tell me? It tells me that they know that the American empire is going to isolate itself. It's going to go to sleep. The American beast or the American giant is going to go to sleep. And I talked about this last week, but I'll bring this up again. Turkish politician Soleiman Sezen, who is an AKP, AK party is Erdogan's party. It's the biggest party in Turkey. AKP city councilman at Samsun's Atakum district. He said recently, quote, historically, everybody has been angry with Hitler and called him a racist. Hitler said, you will curse me for every Jew I did not kill. This is true. Once again, I pray for God to bestow mercy and grace upon Hitler. I pray for this because of the Jewish Zionist Israel, those people who are spreading confusion throughout the world and emerge from under from under every rock and from and and from behind any evil so you see this hatred to the jews in turkey it's rising up it is becoming it, it is hitlerian the hatred it is absolutely hitlerian now there's another thing also that i want to show you guys this is pretty amazing um let me see here hold on i want to show you guys this this is pretty crazy um so there's a report that you can look at it's from march of 2021 i wrote about this when it came out uh, March of 2021 is a report from Global Trends. It's called Global Trends 2040. It was uh, published by the National Intelligence Council. So this is coming from American intelligence. And this is what it says. This is what, this is what we are to expect for the decade of the 40s. This is what we are to expect. In separate silos, the world is fragmented into several economic and security blocks of varying size and strength centered on the United States, China, the European Union, which is Germany, Russia, and a couple of regional powers. These blocks are focused on self-sufficiency, resiliency, and defense. So the Germans, what, is, what this is basically telling us is that the Germans are going to run Europe, and, and they're going to have their own block, and they're going to have their own military might. In other words, even the CIA knows that the world is going to fragment. And the CIA knows that Germany is going to lead its own block of power and that Turkey is going to have its own block of power. Because it also says in the same report from the American intelligence, from U.S. intelligence, it says, it also states how Turkey, quote, probably will seek to take advantage of new opportunities and to take on roles previously filled by a major power to shore up regional stability or gain influence. So Turkey is going to try to gain its own power to fill up the vacuum that America is going to leave. That's what's going to happen. No, no empire lasts forever. This whole idea of, oh, America is always going to be this way and the world's always going to be led by America. No. This stupid dog outside is barking, driving me crazy. Um, no empire lasts forever. That's impossible, right? All empires die. Roman Empire died. Mongolian Empire died. Soviet Union died. German Empire, Dutch Empire, Spanish Empire, French Empire, British Empire. So they're all, all these empires, Ottoman Empire, right? Everything dies. So eventually the American Empire is going gonna, is gonna to go. That's just the bottom line. Now, there's something else I wanted to show you guys. So I want to show you guys this article. This is from a Turkish uh, website. Turkiya Sumhurieti Kumhurbaskanlige. Okay, sounds like Korean. Here we go. So this report here, hold on. This article here has something very interesting. This is very interesting. P 
Okay. Everyone click the like button. I'm happy to see the growth in your channel as of lately. Your messages are too important. I really appreciate that renaissance, man. All right, so here's this article here. With the power of Google Translate, I'll be able to uh, understand what it says. We are ready to be... So this is what Erdogan said. I'm going to read it to you guys. This is crazy. This happened recently. So Erdogan said, in his speech at the AK Party Grand National Assembly group meeting, President Erdogan said, quote, we are ready to be one of the guarantors of the Palestinian side with our humanitarian, political, and military presence. So in other words, Turkey is saying we are willing to put our military presence in the region, in the West Bank or in Gaza, not the West Bank, in Gaza, to protect the Gazans from Israel. I mean, I'm not saying that this is going to happen tomorrow, okay? I'm not one of these, like, crazy, you know, fear-based people. But what I am saying is that in the future, this is, this is how Turkey is going to justify invading Israel. It's going to be under the pretense of the Palestinian cause. And I don't think Turkey cares about the Palestinian cause, but they're going to use it as a justification right there. Right there, everybody. So there you have it. I've been talking about this for years now. And I think eventually there's going to be um, another Holocaust of the Jews. It's, it's, I know it's terrible, but I think that's, it's going to happen. You have Turkey, you have Iran. Um, these countries hate Israel. They have a weird, strange, cultic love for Hitler over there. You have this Turkish politician saying, I pray for the repose of the soul of Adolf Hitler. <coughs> that's, something that, that's something that a skinhead would say. Why is Turkey a part of NATO? Well, it's very simple because Turkey is right there on the Mediterranean. It, it controls access into the Mediterranean. It controls access um, into the Sea of Marmara, Sea of Marmara, into the Black Sea. It has control over the Aegean Sea. If you want to enter the Sea of Marmara, you have to go through the through the um, the Dardanelles. If you want to go through, if you want to enter the Black Sea. Um, from Turkey, you also have to go through Turkish territory. So Turkey has a tremendous amount of control. It is close to Russia. So it is NATO's bulwark in the Mediterranean against Russia. It is also NATO's bulwark against Russia in the Black Sea. So strategically, geo geopolitically, whatever word you want to use, very, very significant. 